Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a form control option button in Microsoft Excel. So I have here in this worksheet fictitious data and I'm going to move over to the developer ribbon up top. If you don't have this ribbon available just go to file options and that will bring up the Excel options dialog. Just want to go to customize ribbon and make sure that you check off developer. From this ribbon under controls I'm going to click insert and you can see there are two types of controls available here form controls and ActiveX controls. I'm going to be using the form control option button so up here I'm going to select option button and then I'm going to drag that onto the worksheet. So you can see in this case the option button is labeled option button 20. That just reflects the number of controls that I have used on this worksheet. So from here I'm going to right click and format this control using the format control selection and the cell link I'm going to set to H2. And from the same tab, the control tab, you could also set 3D shading, but I'm going to leave it as it is by default. Click OK. And now if I go back to the control and I select it, you can see a 1 appears here. But if I click it again, nothing happens. It still stays checked. And that's because option buttons work in units of more than one. You have to have at least two option buttons to have them function as intended. So. I can either copy and paste this one or I can go back to insert and drag another one onto the worksheet. Notice that this next one is labeled option button 21, but it's still part of the same set, meaning these two option buttons will work together. So if I click this option button, notice that the cell H2 is now changed to 2. I didn't have to do any additional configuration to get that to happen. I go back to the first option button, option button 20, it moves back to 1. So I'm going to move a total of four option buttons onto this worksheet. Go back up to insert, form controls. This will be 22 and then one more that will be 23. So now what I would expect to happen is as I check these different option buttons H2 changes anywhere from 1 for the first option button all the way up to value 4 for the last one. 1, 2, 3, and 4. So it's this value, the value of H2, that's going to drive any formulas that we attach to these option buttons. So for example, uh, using the fictitious data I have here, say I wanted to select the first value in the skill test variable with the first option button and then move through the next three with these three option buttons. I could do that using the choose function. So that will be equal sign choose. So we can see that for the choose function we have two types of arguments the index number and then value 1, value 2 and so on. So you have the index number and the values. So the index number in this case will be H2, the cell that is linked to the four option buttons. The values will be the first four values in the skill test variable. So C2, C3, C4, and then C5, all separated by commas. So when I hit enter and enter that function in, right now we're on option button 20, the first option button. So H2, the value of H2 is 1. So as I move to option button, to the second one, option button 21, you see H2 moves to 2. And it's changing the value returned from the skill test variable. So in the first option button, 17, the second 18, the third 16, and the fourth 15, which of course correspond to these values in the skill test variable. 
So this method functions to have multiple option buttons, but what if you want multiple sets of option buttons on the same worksheet? For that we use what's referred to as a group box. So if I move back to controls and insert, you can see down here we have a group box form control. If I click that, I can drag that onto the worksheet, and then I'm going to put multiple option buttons in this group box. So go back to insert, option button, I'm going to drag three on here. So notice the first one is option button 25, and the next one, option button 26, and the third one, option button 27. The reason there's no option button 24 is because the group box was the 24th control loaded on. So from 27, right click, format control. Now you can see the cell link is empty. It's not set to H2. I'll make this one set to I2 and click OK. And then if I select 25, see that's a 1, 26, that's a 2, and 27 sets it to 3. So it operates independently of the other option buttons that I put on first. If I were to add another option button and go outside this new group box, group box 24, it's going to link to the other option buttons that are just on the worksheet and not in a group box. So notice this comes back with an error because I didn't set the choose function to have a fifth value, which I could do now, comma, and just make this the fifth value in this variable skill test. So you can see this option button is linked to these original option buttons. So the group boxes allow the option buttons to function independently of other option buttons. We could also change this group box label just by double clicking on the text. So I'll change this name from group box 24 to group box 1. We can also right click on the group box label and edit text. I'll use that method to change one of the option button labels. I'll move here to option button 20 and I'm going to right click, select edit text. I'm going to change option button 20 to skill test 1 because this is the option that's selected to display the first value of the skill test variable. To change the values of the option button label or the group box label, we can double click on the text or right click and edit text. I hope you found this video on configuring a form control option button to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me. I'll be happy to assist you.